Welcome to another video of tiny creatures with huge importance in agriculture and society as they considerably damage our food and ornamentals. This video is dedicated to greenhouse farmers and houseplant parents who have to deal with them most of the time. In your houseplant parenting journey, and of course in greenhouse farming, protecting your crops and your houseplants from thrips attack is a constant battle. So, know thy enemy. Let's zoom in to the micro world of banded greenhouse thrips or houseplant thrips. Many different species of thrips attack greenhouse crops and ornamentals. But in this video, specimens and discussions are focused on Hercina thrips femoralis, or more commonly known as banded greenhouse thrips. This species doesn't just feast on your monstera, philodendron, alopecia, and peperomia. They also feed on celery, eggplant, banana, beet, cucumber, tomatoes, and other kinds of vegetables and ornamentals. We can't blame them for liking what we like, can we? One thing to note about this insect is that thrips is called thrips and not thrip, whether you are referring to one or more. It is both the singular and plural form. They can easily transfer from one plant to another because the adults are winged. Wings are narrow and fringed with long setae. Their fringed wings distinguishes them from other insect groups. They belong to order Thysanoptera, which was derived from Greek words Thysanos, meaning fringe, and Terra, meaning wings. They feed by using their rasping, sucking type of mouth parts. With their asymmetrical pair of mandibles, they scrape the outer leaf layer, then suck up the fluids, leaving white or silvery patches. Severe infestation leads to leaves dropping off, and of course, there will be significant reduction in yield. In the case of houseplants, display worthiness and wellness benefits are diminished with the possibility of losing an entire collection. Feeding damage is also accompanied by fecal matter that look like tiny black droppings. Familiarity with feeding damage and excrement will help with proper diagnosis of what's really going on with your plant. Adult body color is mainly brown to dark brown. They measure about 1.5 millimeters. There are white bands on their forewings, hence the name banded greenhouse thrips. Reproduction occurs sexually. Cylindrical eggs are deposited by females partially or completely into the plant tissue using its serrated ovipositor. So for houseplant parents who use water spray to dislodge thrips, it is not surprising to experience reinfestation in a few days because the eggs inserted into the plant tissue were protected from water pressure and can successfully hatch. Eggs hatch into pale white nymph, which gradually turn opaque or cream-colored as they feed. There are two nymphal insters actively moving around, feeding and excreting before they molt into the prepupal stage. This prepupal stage stayed on the underside of the allocation leaf. Like the nymphal stages, it is mobile. However, it doesn't feed or excrete anymore. Also, the presence of wing pads is evident. It will molt one more time to become a pupa. This pupa also stayed on the underside of the leaf. The wing pads were longer and pale but slowly turned brown by the hour. The antennae were curved backwards onto the dorsal side of the head. 
newly emerged adult was pale and slowly turned brown with time. Now it's ready for the next cycle. <laughs> Apparently, her senior thrips femoralis prefers to complete its development above ground, unlike other greenhouse thrips that spend their non-feeding stages mostly in the soil. This means that any control strategy directed in the soil will not be that effective for the banded greenhouse thrips. Thank you very much for watching! If you like zooming in to the micro world, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. See you in the next one!